Busy weekend of college football is upon us. But before we get to Saturday, we've got two games to break down on Friday. Plus, we're going to give you three looks in Major League Baseball. Don't want to forget about America's pastime here on Friday heading to the weekend. As you can see, Adam Trigger joins us yet again. There are many reasons we have Trigg on uh, today. One of them, uh, of course, is incredible intellect. Two, Mark Zinno still on location. And three, we want to hit our quota for the A's and White Sox this week. And that is the game, Trigg, you are going to break down to lead us off on Friday. Yeah, Brian. So I think you look at this game. It's A's, White Sox. I think it quickly just gets like thrown. Okay, two bad teams. It's priced as such, right? Like you see A's open a, you know, a minus 120 favorite on the road. I think we're probably up to minus 125, minus 130. Definitely going to be minus 130, you know, as this airs. And, you know, I think the A's are just getting discounted way too much here for like bad team versus bad team because the A's have not been a bad baseball team in a couple of months. I'm going to go as, as far as to say, Brian, this is your AL West champions of 2025. I think this team Bold. is that good. I think they're a year away. But if you've watched this team play over the last couple months, they're 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 playing like the best team in that division now. It's just the first few months had had buried them so much that, that, that they're not in the mix. But when you talk about like the Angels, the Rangers, the Mariners, um, you know, and, well, obviously the Astros are, are are still a pretty quality team, but like this is a really good baseball team. And they just went and took two of three on the road at the Astros earlier this week in games the Astros needed to win. So I, I've just been overall impressed with with the, the ball that this team has played. And on the other side, the White Sox are just a disaster. But the other thing I think is like not really going to get discussed here is the fact that you're going to look at this number. It's going to be priced based off the starting pitching, but you can pretty much set your watch to Garrett Crochet not pitching past like the third or fourth inning here. He's on a strict pitch count. He's on a strict innings limit. Brian, he hasn't gone four innings, or he hasn't gone more than four innings in the entire second half. So since the All-Star break, You'd have to go back to June 30th to find a start where Garrett Crochet pitched more than four innings. So, you know, just knowing that you're going into this game and you're going to need five innings from that White Sox bullpen, in my opinion, puts the White Sox at a bigger disadvantage than a quote unquote minus 120 disadvantage. Now, on the other side, I think the reason that the price is, is still sort of intact here, if you will, on the A's is they have a young starter that's relatively unknown on the mound in Brady Basso. Um, you know, and, and the, the good thing when you watch as much AAA ball as I do, like this is kind of like one of my ins. This is how I handicap Major League Baseball. I try to find value where I think they're, they're mispricing a guy that doesn't have a huge sample size at the big league level. And I think that's what's happening here with Basso. So it, as far as like his minor league numbers are concerned this year, I, I think they're a little bit inflated. And the reason is he went from double A to triple A quickly called up and like thrown into the bullpen and then back down to triple A when, when guys get like moved all throughout the organization like that, sometimes it, it, it takes its toll. Um, so, you know, I look at his start in April, phenomenal at double A came up, kind of got the quick call up, struggled a little bit, probably because he was bouncing from like triple A starter, big league bullpen back at triple A last two months in Vegas, he's been outstanding. Uh, in August in Las Vegas, Brian, 2.84 ERA, 0.87 whip, opponent batting average under 200, comes up, gets his first big league start last time out on September 7th, six shutout innings. I believe it was against the Tigers, um, but a, a really strong effort. And the White Sox aren't much more than a triple A offense right now. So I think it's going to play yeah. in this game. And then, of course, coming off the loss for the A's, the good news about coming off the when you when you play the A's off the loss, is you get their top bullpen arms, which are as good as any top bullpen arms in the league. Mason Miller's still the best reliever in baseball, in Oof. my opinion. And then you pair him with Grant Holman, um, and, and their other A's have a couple of really good bullpen arms. If Basso gives you six or, or, or si another six good innings here, Brian, I don't know how the A's are in the lead, and there's just not very many scenarios where you get Mason Miller the ball with the lead, and he's not going to get you home with a win. So I think this is cheap for the A's. Minus 125, minus 130. I like the A's here. Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you there. Um, you know, I'm going to get to my half of the play in just a second. Trig, I don't know if you've seen this. It's incredible because you talked about, you know, how Crochet is not going to go deep into this game. 
Have you seen the White Sox, if you bet them in the first five versus full game, what the difference in ROI is this year? It's insane and just speaks to how awful that bullpen is. That basically guys like Crochet can keep them in the game for the first, but then the bullpen comes in and it just completely implodes. It's They're basically, I think if you would have bet the White Sox just first five every game, you're doing okay. You're treading water, but right. obviously you've you know you, you've lost your you've lost your house if you bet them full game every game this year. <laughs> yeah. uh, just quick quick just quick follow up there with the White Sox trying to avoid infamy and the worst record of all time. Do you think there's actually going to be value going again? Do you think the books are going to maybe price them in a way where people are like, oh man, they're going to try to avoid this record, or is, or is that or is this is this price more just that it's the A's unknown pitcher? Uh, I think it's the A's unknown pitcher, Brian. I, I just okay. don't know how. I don't know what the books would be doing trying to, like, give you any sort of opportunity to fade this yeah. White Sox team at, like, a good price. I mean, Albert okay. Suarez yeah. a week ago was a $4 favorite against this White Sox team. Got guy that was <laughs> pitching in Korea a year ago. So, it, it's, like, I, I just think that the books don't really know Basso okay. very much, and and I think you're kind of getting a gift price here with, with the A's. All right, my half of the double play, something the books do know, something all of you know if you've watched baseball for the last 30 years, is that the Colorado Rockies are much better offensively at home than they are on the road. So I like the Rockies team total over today. They're returning home to Coors to face the Cubs. Uh, and look, just to quantify what I said about the Rockies, again, you all know it, but this season, okay, on the road, Colorado, third fewest runs per game on the road, 3.46 per game. At home, third most runs per game, 5.01. The number here, Trick, is only four and a half. You could get it at minus 120 juice to the over. I think, again, I love when making bets where all you need is an average performance from a team. And the Cubs are, but there's a chance the Rockies will come up to bat all nine innings in this game. They are the underdog, obviously, against the Cubs. But I will note this. Assad, the starter for the Cubs, he is not the same pitcher away from Wrigley. He's, his ERA is fantastic at the friendly confines. But away from home, that ERA goes up by nearly two full points. So I'm keeping this one short and sweet, guys. Rockies team total over four and a half. I don't think they have any problem getting to five runs. It's what they average at home. So uh, simple as that. Comment down below with your favorite bets in Major League Baseball for Friday. We will now get to our good friend, Mark Zinno. Guys, give us a thumbs up here. Mark, who, by the way, very happy about his 4% winner on the Bills last night. But he's he, the man is, is protecting our country. He's going out in his car every morning because it's the only place he has Wi-Fi out there to give you winners three days in a row now. Mark has given you a winning baseball pick on the show. Framber, indeed, was the color of his energy again yesterday. And he's breaking down O's Tigers. He thinks the, this is another game where the uh, road team, the price, is a little too short. Yeah, BP, last day of cappers in cars. Let's take a quick moment to celebrate our 4% best bet win last night with the Buffalo Bills. So very happy we cashed that. I know you told everybody how much I loved it. I did, and it ended up working out for us, Bills. In an easy, no-sweat winner. But on to my half of the double play. Orioles got to be happy to see the Detroit Tigers. Birds have lost five of their last seven. They trail the Yankees by two games in the American League. Zach Eflin starts for Baltimore. His three road starts since coming to the Orioles, all at least six innings, all two runs or less. And it, weren't, it wasn't against easy lineups either. One was against the Guardians in Cleveland. We know they can hit at home. The other one was in Coors Field. Bird's bats have been begging for a breakout. Over the last seven games, they've averaged just over two runs per game. Tigers started now under started. Make sure you guys choose action or away pitcher must start. O's don't get a win tonight. It's really bad the way things have been going as they head towards the postseason. They're the much better team here. This is a favorable price. We don't always see the Orioles at this number. So let's get the Orioles on the money line here for my half of the double play. All right, smash that like button if you're rolling with Mark on the O's there. Again, got to remind you about this special offer going on at wagetalk.com. Great time to take advantage as for the next four weeks, you can get every football play, NFL and college, from your favorite handicapper for just $199. Trig, I was not a math major at Ohio University, but that is less than $50 per week. I can tell you that. Why don't you tell the people what you've got going on this weekend in both college and NFL. Yeah, so this weekend, whole bunch of plays up for college and NFL. Um, actually, it'll be, it'll be my biggest card of the year to this point. Um, so definitely take advantage of that special. And 
you know, our all access packages are up. I'm going to have a 5% play in Major League Baseball tonight. Uh, so if you're watching this on Friday, certainly take advantage of that. 3-0 and so far in MLB this week uh, on a 4-1 and week overall. And, um, you know, I, it's just uh, another 4% winner with the Brewers last night. So I'm um, feeling it in baseball right now. There's a play I really like on Friday. And, um, yeah, it, it's up on my page right now. So check that out, wt.buzz slash at. I will talk about what I've got going in just a little bit. But first, we're going to talk Friday Night Lights, a little college football. It is a busy Friday in the state of Kansas, where both Kansas and Kansas State are in action, hosting UNLV and Arizona, respectively. Uh, let's start with the Kansas State-Arizona game, Trig. I think that's the one maybe more people are interested on. It's on Fox. It's two ranked teams. I have a conceptual question for you. Um Obviously, you and I both tend to play a lot of underdogs. Okay, people know that if they're at all familiar with uh, you know uh, our work at wagertalk.com. But when it's ranked versus ranked, I often find it's the favorite that is undervalued. You know, the public, they see a ranked team getting points, and they're like, oh, wow, what a great value that must be. And to just quantify that, you go back to 2020. Again, that was the COVID season. A lot of wacky things happened. But... 57% of the time in top 25 games, the favorite has covered. So do you think there is anything to that? I mean, is that sort of your experience? Do you find favorites are undervalued in this spot? Uh, Kansas State, obviously a much better team at home the last couple of years than they've been on the road. They're off the tough game at Tulane, which they pulled out. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you say that. I feel like it's somewhat anecdotal sometimes. Like, you know, it'll run hot. Like, I I just think the last year in basketball, um, when you were laying points against the ranked teams and just and you, you cashed like 15 of them in a row, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. but, it, you know, toward the end of the season, it, it kind of dried up. So I would need like actual numbers about uh, like on that. I think sometimes it, it happens frequently and, and we like latch on to it and it's just like, you know, it's like an auto play. And I, I don't really necessar necessarily agree with that. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, you, let's put it this way, Brian. There's, there's typically a reason. Like, if a ranked team is going to be favored by that much over another ranked team, it's usually the, the books mm -hmm. have, have taken that into consideration, I think is, is the best way to put it. Now, as far as Kansas State, Arizona, I'll, I'll throw a hot take at you right here. I, I don't think either of these teams are top 20 teams. I wouldn't be surprised if neither of these teams, was ranked like five, six weeks from now. I oh, don't yeah. like Arizona I don't, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not high on Kansas state this year either. I think, I don't think they're as good as they were last year. So last year's team went eight and four. I believe they won a bowl game. Um, I, I, you know, I think their offensive line has issues. We, we don't really know if their quarterback is, you know, he's, he's still a ton of upside, but we, we don't really know, you know, exactly what we're going to get out of him. Um, I, I don't know that their defense is great, but I will tell you one 4% play I made this week is Auburn minus 28. And I I've been digging into that matchup and those teams and, and real concerning what Air what Arizona let that horrible New Mexico team do yeah. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. That's a concern. Yeah. And that makes me think that like, even though I won't have a play in this game, I don't have a super strong opinion. It makes me think Kansas State is the right side because I just don't know that you can allow that much damage to a New Mexico team that at one point was like a double-digit underdog at home to an FCS school like a couple weeks ago. Yes, the line moved. But um, now they've got to go on the road and, and try to deal with Kansas State at home. It, it just feels like a tough scenario. I, I don't really want to lay that many, but it, it, I, I have to lean Kansas State for that reason. Yeah, and not only was Arizona's defense a concern in that game you mentioned against New Mexico, the opener, but what about the what happened to the offense last week? They play an FCS team, Northern Arizona, the Lumberjacks, okay, <laughs> out of the big sky, and, and they were losing at halftime. McMillan had two catches for 11 yards. I They have something to note, guys, you're going to want to monitor this as the day progresses. Arizona has offensive line issues. Their starting center was out last week, and the left tackle got hurt against New Mexico. When your center and left tackle are out, that is bad. That is very yep. bad. So uh, that, that, that might be why this line is where it's at, uh, because, you know, I mean, that – I feel offensive line issues are always underreported. I mean, look what happened to the Cleveland Browns last week uh, over in the NFL. 
against the Cowboys. Their offensive line was banged all to hell, and, and they couldn't protect Deshaun Watson, who's who has you know obviously his own set of problems going on at the moment. But yeah, that, that, that's something to monitor here. Arizona's offensive line issues. Um, if you had something else to add about that game, you can. But we can also pivot to UNLV versus Kansas. Kansas has taken money, it looks like. They're up to nine and a half pretty much most places here. Look at the way you talk live odds screen as we're recording. UNLV is a team to me. They surprised a lot of people last year. That tells me they might be just as good this year, but they probably take a step back, wins and losses. That's always the way I look at things year plus one after a surprise team. Where, and Kansas deserved to beat Illinois last week. That was a horrible, mm-hmm. horrible second half from the Jayhawks. Yeah, Brian. So there's, I, I really like this UNLV team. So I, I don't, I think I've like made it a, a point to, you know, let people know, like I, I really, when it comes to college football, I'm very like, a, I'm a two conference guy. I'm ACC and I'm the Mac. And it's because it's just not scalable to do baseball as, as hard as I'm doing baseball, college basketball. And then, so I, I try to slim it down. Right. And there's only a, a few programs outside of those two conferences that I, that I'm really tuned into. and. For, for a couple of reasons this year, I decided one of those was going to be UNLV because A, I, okay. I think they're going to win the I think they're going to win the Mountain West. Uh, they have a huge okay. game coming up in a couple of weeks with Syracuse. It's going to be an awesome game on Friday night out in Las Vegas. And um, you know, I, I think that this team could be very strong. Now, here's the, the challenge, Brian. I think they could be really strong in the context of the Mountain West Conference. What where where I have mm. a hard time is quantifying what this jump means right what is what is like taking them out of you know playing group of five competition or like last week they, they had a nobody opponent um mean you know now now it's a road game it's a friday night it's kansas coming in pissed off after losing to illinois you got to think they're going to be better so it's like as badly as i'd love to to take the points with what i what i think could be a live underdog uh you know it, it's difficult to do so knowing you have to quantify the jump for them from what we saw last year, most of the year, which was playing other group of five teams to going on the road and playing Kansas. Now that you do have one um, like reference point this year, and that's, they were very impressive against Houston. And that's a Houston team that turned around and was very impressive against Oklahoma, right? Turned around and only lost Mm -hmm. to Oklahoma by four. So I think that like, I guess is a, a positive in the column of UNLV. I like the points, but but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I feel like I don't have a good enough beat on just how good Kansas is. And if you get Kansas in the in the pissed off mode, coming back after kind of a lackluster performance against Illinois, uh, I'm worried they could uh you know kind of pour it on at some point. So no play for me. I was leaning toward the points, but the the, the steam has me a, like a little bit concerned there that 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 Kansas might be the right side. Just an all around tough game. Uh, I. I, but I wouldn't be surprised if UNLV hangs around. I, I don't think they're a fluke at all. I think they're going to be right there in the Mountain West. And like I said, I think they, they're they an outside sort of shot. They're my pick to win that league. I, I, I really like them in that league this year. And that league's not what it used to be, Trig. You know that. The Mountain right. West, a lot of those, you know, with the transfer portal, those teams get picked apart so they're not as strong as they've been necessarily in years past. Well, that's I a good point, a- Brian. They have all – that's one thing I should have been off the top. UNLV has almost their entire team back. That's what's to really like mm-hmm. about them. Like, they really didn't lose anyone. Like So that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Uh, I do have a 4% college football best bet going on Friday. You can get that at my page, wt.buzz slash bp right now. Again, it was a tremendous – uh, Saturday last week in college football, we won all three of our sides. Trick, I, I looked it up last mm-hmm. night. I talked because I talked about the show yesterday. Northern Illinois, San Jose State, UL Monroe all went out right. They covered the number by a combined 81 and a half points. Thank you very much. That is uh, probably won't be that easy again this Saturday, but we're going to try. Uh, we'll be locked and loaded for Saturday mm-hmm. later today. Again, check out that special. You get NFL and college Four weeks for $199, 25 and 11 run in CFP for me going back to last year. It was a winning week one in the NFL as well. Also, my top Premier League pick out, soccer's back this weekend, guys. Mark Zeno is not here to make fun of me for that. 9-0-1 run, Trig, in the EPL for yours truly. I got my best bet locked and loaded. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern, guys, so you got to hurry to get that one on Saturday. And that's going to do it for the morning wager. Hopefully, we have enlightened you on Friday's college football games. We gave you three plays in Major League Baseball. We'll be back Monday with this show. Mark Zinno will be back free from his duties protecting the United States of America. Thank you, Trig. 
for jumping on the show the last two days. And until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.